Hey chemistry super fans, today we're going to be doing another type of titration. This time we're going to be trying to figure out the concentration of this bottle of uh, sodium hydroxide. We got it from the supply company and it says it's only approximately 0.1 molar for its concentration. To do that we're going to be reacting it with a solid acid that we can measure out on the balance and that's going to be oxalic acid. I'm going to weigh out some oxalic acid on the balance, I'm going to dissolve it in water, and then we're going to titrate it with the base. We're going to use a universal indicator today to um, just look at what happens, but we're, the main thing is that we're going to be using a pH probe for this titration. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing is measuring out some oxalic acid powder into this beaker. Oxalic acid has this for a formula, H2C2O4. It loses two hydrogens in reactions. Its formula weight, or its molar mass, is 126.07 grams per mole. Now I did calculations earlier to figure out how much oxalic acid that I want to use, and it should be about 0 0.15 grams. Okay, so we went a little bit over, but it just means that I'll have to use a little bit more sodium hydroxide than I originally planned. Next, we're going to bring this over and dissolve this in water, add our indicator and our pH probe, and then uh, get started. So we've got our oxalic acid powder here. I'm gonna be adding some distilled water, stirring it on the stir plate and conditioning the burette with the sodium hydroxide as that is mixing. Okay, so we've added indicator. It turned red. We added universal indicator, so red indicates very acidic. I do that by myself too. And then uh, the first pH probe I was using was reading a pH around nine, so it was not calibrated. And so I just switched it out with another one and it's reading a pH of 1.80. Yep, sure. I made sure that our volume today is going to start at zero on the base burette. And so what I'm going to be doing is adding base, dropping the base, until the pH changes um, by 0.1 or 0.2 each time, and then keeping that point. Right, so our volume right now is 3.50 milliliters. It's changing points now. A little bit. Now it's changing red. Now it's turning orange again. Okay. Now it's changing red again. Now it's changing orange again. Changing red. Right, so now our volume of base added is 5.45 milliliters. Now the volume of base added is 7.50 milliliters. Okay, now we've got a volume of 8.90 milliliters. Right now the volume is 
9.90 milliliters. Right now the volume is 10.62 milliliters. And now we've got a volume of 11.42 milliliters. Now we've got a volume of 12.00 milliliters. And now we're at 12.80 milliliters. And we're at 13.30 milliliters. Now we're at 14.05 milliliters. Now we're at 14.62 milliliters. Now we're at 15.30 milliliters. Okay, now we're at 16.30 milliliters. Now we're at 17.00 milliliters. Now we're at 17.80 milliliters. Now it's 19.20 milliliters. And now we're at 20.62 milliliters. Okay, so now we're at 22.00 milliliters. And now we're at 23.45 milliliters. We're right now at 24.65 milliliters. It's changing to orange now. Okay, we've got 25.80 milliliters. Oh look, it's changing color a lot now. Okay, we're at 27.30 milliliters. Daddy! Now we're at 27.55 milliliters. All right, just a couple of drops added, so it's 27.70. Just another couple drops, so now we're still at 27.80 milliliters now. Okay. It's called blue. This is blue and that is blue. Oh, I didn't look. Right now we've got a volume of 27.90 milliliters. And now we're at 28.00. That's uh, 28.10 milliliters. Yep. Now it's 28.30 milliliters. Okay, now we're at 28.40 milliliters. Now we're at 28.60 milliliters. Now our volume is 0.75 milliliters. Now our volume is 28.98 milliliters. Right now we've got 30.40 milliliters. Now we've got 32.40 milliliters. We've got 33.80 milliliters. 
Now we're at 36.20 milliliters. Now we're at 38.10 milliliters. Right, and now we're at 41.00 milliliters. Right, and we're gonna end today at 45.60 milliliters, so that we have a nice graph here. And so the way to analyze this graph to figure out, because we didn't use an indicator for the purpose of doing this titration, we used the indicator just kind of as some nice observations. But the way that you do this is you're going to trace or examine, and you're gonna find that midpoint of that steep slope. And it looks like it was between 28.4 and 28.6 milliliters of base added. So 28.4 and 28.6, we can call it 28.5 milliliters of base uh, for our calculations. Now to first analyze what happened in this reaction, we need to understand the balanced chemical equation in a neutralization, it's an acid plus a base reacting to become water and some type of salt. In this reaction, the acid was oxalic acid. The base was sodium hydroxide. And then water and the salt that was formed is sodium oxalate. And we'll leave the formula for the salt blank for right now. Now, oxalic acid looks like this. It's H2C2O4, and it loses two hydrogens. Sodium hydroxide can be represented like this. One sodium, and one oxygen linked to a hydrogen, a hydroxide ion. Now a hydroxide ion reacts as a base by taking hydrogens from other things. And so we see that because an oxalic acid gives off two hydrogens, but a single sodium hydroxide can only accept one, that to balance this, there actually need to be two sodium hydroxides and what is produced would be two water molecules and sodium oxalate. It has two sodiums, each with a one plus charge, and an oxalate ion, which has a one, uh, two minus charge. Now in this reaction, a gram amount of oxalic acid powder was weighed out and that was 0 0.179 grams. We know that in a neutralization reaction, the moles of hydrogen need to equal the moles of hydroxide. And so instead of grams of oxalic acid, we need to convert it to moles using its molar mass. and we get that it's 0 0.00142 moles of oxalic acid. Now this shouldn't be what goes in here because oxalic acid has two hydrogens per molecule of oxalic acid. And so this must be multiplied by two to get the moles of hydrogen. And so we get that there are 0 0.00284 moles of hydrogen, which also equal the moles of hydroxide. And we're trying to find the concentration of the sodium hydroxide, and so we need to divide it by the number of liters. In the experiment, 
we used 28.5 milliliters to neutralize it. And so we get that the liters of sodium hydroxide solution we used would be 0 0.0285 liters. Now the last thing to do is to take the moles of hydroxide and divide by the liters to get the concentration. Remember, the bottle said approximately 0 0.1 moles per liter. We get this for our final answer with significant figures, and notice that this is really only um, like four ten thousandths off from being the, uh, the molarity that was listed on the bottle. Now, for the calculations that's done, to analyze what happened in the graph, this is a sketch of the graph, and the pH where the slope was steepest was approximately eight, which is expected. It's slightly basic because this is a weak acid and a strong base. When a weak acid and a strong base react, their equivalence point is higher than seven. And so it was approximately eight and the volume was 28.5 milliliters. What's interesting about this graph is we see that there are two steep sections. This is the one we were most concerned with. There's also this steep section here. And this steep section actually occurred, the midpoint of it, at half of this volume. And so what's going on here is that at the beginning of the titration, all of the oxalic acid molecules had both hydrogens on them. And as base was added during this initial phase, each molecule of oxalic acid only lost its first hydrogen. And so through this first section, each one was only losing one hydrogen up until here. At this point, all of the oxalic acid molecules had lost their first hydrogen and they began to lose their second hydrogen. Once we get to this point of the graph, all of the oxalic acid molecules have lost both hydrogens and adding more sodium hydroxide does not drastically change the pH at that point. So uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully this has helped you understand a little bit about, more about acids that can give up more than one hydrogen and how their titration curves look, as well as how to do a titration without using an indicator that will help you just using a graph of pH. Okay, bye. Bye.